Hi and welcome to the Memcad Memcached video tutorial. In this uh, tutorial, we'll talk about what is Memcached, what are its properties, how we can utilize it, what are the advantages and disadvantages of Memcached. So, in this video tutorial, uh, we are going to uh, cover the following details about Memcached. We'll discuss about what is Memcached. We'll discuss about what are the pros and cons of using Memcached. What are the properties of Memcached? We'll also go through the API doc provided by the uh, Java uh, Google Doc. We'll also see how can we install how can we inst install this on uh, Windows machine. We'll see what are the different operations present on Memcached. We'll also connect. Memcached uh, server from a Java application using Spy Memcached uh, driver, and we'll we'll also see the uh, different programs. So, what is Memcached? Memcached server is an in in memory cache that stores anything from binary to text or primitives associated with a key. Actually, uh, Memcached uh, stores data in RAM. In the form of key value pairs. So Memcached is a a very big hash map of which stores the data in the form of key and value. So it's not kind of persistence, it, a persistent database. It is just a map which stores data in uh, in your uh, machine's RAM. So it's a very uh, big hash map, you can say. So like any other Cache storing data in memory uh, prevents you from going to database and file servers or any backend systems every time a user requests for a data. So suppose you know that there is some data which is not going to change for some time, then it is always better to store that data in some some cache mechanism so that uh, you'll not you'll not be hitting the database again and again and exhausting the resources. So if you are using memcached or any other uh, caching mechanism, so it reduces lots of load on your backend system and which helps you to increase the scalability of the application. Since data is stored in the memory, it is not stored in the database. So it is pretty faster as compared to the expensive backend calls. Memcached is free and open source. It is high, high performance distributed memory object caching system. This is generic in nature. It is not associated with any type of application. Application can be written in Java, it can be written in PHP, or it can be written in Scala, or it can be written in, in any language. So Memcached is a very generic application which can store data in the form of key value pair connecting to any kind of application. So it is pretty generic in nature and it is its primary use is it's in st speeding up the dynamic web applications by uh, caching their data and elevating the database loads. As I already told, this is a uh, in-memory uh, caching system which stores the data in the form of key value pairs and here we have the keys in the form of strings and values can be the objects. So the objects, if, if the objects are getting stored in memcached memory, uh, memory then those objects must be serializable. If the objects are not serializable, then uh, putting and fetching the data uh, from memcache D memory uh, will result in error. Memcache D is a memory based caching system and it is written in, in C language. Now we'll see what are all the pros and cons of memcache D. First of all, it reduces the database loads, obviously because it's, uh, it, it, it stores lots of data in memory and uh, avoids uh, lots of database calls. This is perfect for websites with high database loads, just elevating the, uh, the data base calls. It also reduces lots of number of requests to database, correct? This is obvious. It also cuts down the I/O access because the most of the data is stored in the uh, uh, RAM of the uh, machine, so I/O of the machine reduces. 
and which also helps us in speeding up the application. Now coming up to the, coming up to the consequences of memcached. First of all, a very straightforward. This is not a persistent store, so you cannot use memcached as a permanent database, just like MySQL, Oracle, and any other database. But memcached is just a key value pair of a non-persistent store. It can lose data as soon as the database, as soon as the memcached server is restarted, right? So you can you should not you should never be using memcached as a persistent store or you should not never be using this memcached as a database and I, I already told that this is not specific to any application it doesn't have any schema it stores the data in the form of key value pairs so you can connect this memcached server with any application where you want to store the data in the form of key value pair there is one constraint like you cannot store the data of value whose size is more than 1 MB. So 1 MB the maximum limit of the data whose, whose value is 1 MB. And this its key size can be 255 characters max. So this is the constraint which we have. Now we will see lots of uh, several properties of memcached. There is one drawback or you can say this is the property of memcached that it doesn't it does not provide the replication of applications. There is no major configuration required whenever you are starting the memcached application. We will see how you will set up the memcached or windows and, and Linux applications and how we are starting them. So there is no uh, major configuration required to set up a memcached application. This memcached server uses RAM, random access memory and it uses the LRU least recently used mechanism to evict the uh, older data which is uh, not being used for a long time then the LRU mechanism is used to remove the, remove the older data from RAM RAM. So now we will see how we basically manage the replication uh, problem in memcached. So suppose you have an application and there are three memcached servers M1, M2 and M3 connected to it. So suppose memcached, uh, this application puts some data on M1 and puts some data on M2 and puts some data on M3. So these, but uh, uh, data resides, data which, which application has pushed on M1, that data reside will only reside on M1 only, it will never reach to M2. Right. Similarly, the data which has been added on M2, M2 memcached server, it will never replicate it to M3 or M1. So, suppose one day and at some time M1 goes down, so whatever data is present on M1, that would be lost. Right. That is why I said this is not a persistent store. It is just a key value pair which helps you to cache the database objects which are not frequently changing then you can use the memcached server to store the data. Yes, this is the point like if M1 goes down then the data which is present on M1 that would be lost. But as soon as the new data comes that will be either stored on M2 or M3 as per the availability of the uh, memcached server. So you, you can see clearly see that M1, M2, M3 are not synchronized. So there are always the chances of losing the data, but yes, you can you can add several several you can configure several memcached servers with an application so that you will never basically uh, lose the context of memcached servers. So we'll see now what are what are the places we utilize memcached. So first of all is uh, say, uh, we use memcached, memcached applications in session management. So session and uh, as soon as some user logs in and there are n number of applications present then how do you, how do you basically distribute the session in, in all the applications. So Tomcat has given a very uh, uh, handy uh, configuration in itself there you can configure the memcached server and if there are 
n number of tomcat servers present so all the servers would be connecting to same memcached server memcached application and every tomcat server would be getting the same uh, session if uh, anyone uh, application has created this uh, a session object so it is used in session management another one is optimizing db hits by caching data in memory so you can put uh, the memcached layer between your database and application and so it can help you to reduce the database calls and so uh, basically optimizing the database hits.